Welcome back. Well, the federal moratorium on evictions is expiring at the end of next month. That's July 31st. And state and local governments are already preparing for the flood of eviction lawsuits that are coming their way. We're joined now by Peter Hepburn, Rutgers University, Newark Department of Sociology and Anthropology Assistant Professor, and Yahoo Finance's Alexis Keenan. Thank you both for joining us. So, Peter, I want to start with what happens on August 1st after that uh, moratorium expires. After it expires, are we going to be facing essentially at large a large scale homeless crisis? You know, I don't, I don't think it's going to translate into homelessness immediately by any means. But come August 1st, renters nationwide will have the fewest protections available to them since the start of the pandemic. Um, there are a few states that will still have eviction moratoria on the books. But in the vast majority of states, renters will not have any uh, further protections available to them. Peter, this is Alexis here. I want to actually take a look at those states that you're talking about. We're talking about five states in the U.S. plus D.C. have so far adopted protections against eviction. That's uh, Hawaii, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, and California. So is it your impression that not enough is being done here? Why are we seeing just five states have measures in place? Is that going to be enough to uh, keep the eviction flood from happening? Oh, well, I mean, I, I think you've got to recognize that at this point we are, you know, 16 months into a pandemic and there is a lot of, um, uh, a lot of a lot of these governments want things to return to normal um, and are hoping to sort of restart um, business as usual. Um, but at this point, we still we still know that there are inefficiencies in getting emergency rental assistance out to to renters and to landlords. Uh, and so maintaining uh, maintaining the CDC eviction moratorium for another month and maintaining state level moratoria uh, for some time thereafter provides a little bit more time for that money to make it out to affected parties. Professor, I wanted to um, get your thoughts on um, something that's before the Supreme Court. Earlier this this month, a group of uh, home uh, property owners had asked the high court to block the CDC from extending the moratorium on evictions. I think in cases like these, the landlords are, are sort of seen as the bad guys, uh, but uh, they too have responsibilities and bills to pay. So what should and could the government be doing right now to extend help to those landlords and take some of the pressure off? You know, I, I think it's important to recognize that that Congress has um, has already taken steps to help landlords. Um, over forty six billion dollars in emergency rental assistance has been provided um, as a part of the Consolidated Appropriations Act of December of last year and of the American Rescue Plan of March of this year. Um, where governments have struggled is in getting that money out to landlords. Um, some some uh, state and, and local governments have been able to get that money out more effectively than others, and um, and, and right now we're we're kind of waiting to see how how effectively uh, the remainder of that money will be able to to make it out the door. Um, we've also seen in the case of California a real investment on the part of the states in making even more money available. Um, and, and ultimately, that's money that's going to to landlords and will help to prop up a lot of um, uh, a, a lot of property managers who have perhaps struggled uh, during this last uh, 16 months. Peter, you talk about the federal government making that forty six point five billion dollars in emergency rental assistance available to the states. But you've also spoken about how it's allocated to the states and distributed being flawed. So why exactly is that? What's the problem there? Yeah. So um, Congress chose to allocate this money on the basis of state population overall, uh, without taking into account the fact that some states have proportionally more renters than others, or taking into account, for instance, that it costs more to rent a typical apartment in some states than others. Um, so for instance, here in here in New York, uh, there are quite a lot of renter households, and median rent is is quite high. Um, by comparison, smaller states um, that received uh, a sort of a, a minimum payment uh, often have proportionally very few renter households, and the, the cost of renting is, is very low. Um, 
So there are going to be some larger um, states and, and states that were hit quite hard by the pandemic that are receiving much less assistance on a per rent or household basis. And that's going to, you know, inevitably that means that, that fewer resources are available and harder decisions need to be made about who can access that money and who, who gets left out in the cold. All right, we have to leave that there. Peter Hepburn, assistant professor at Rutgers University, Newark. Yahoo Finance's Alexis Keenan, thank you both for joining us.